In this video, I share a Stoic-inspired death meditation that will help you move past fear, limiting beliefs, and resistance that are preventing you from living a fulfilling life. To truly wire it in, listen to it for 21 days straight, and you'll notice that you're more motivated than ever to live a powerful life. And then afterwards, listen to it for about once a week to keep limiting beliefs, fear, and resistance in check. Hi, I'm David, and I help people reclaim their lives from brain fog, chronic fatigue, and low self-esteem. Today's video is about the stoic practice of memento mori, or remembering your death. And what memento mori teaches us is, to truly live, you must be deeply conscious of your death. And while that may seem like it's morbid or sad, it's actually one of the most powerful practices you can do. In my life, what I've found is that when I practice memento mori, my fear of failure, fear of the opinions of others, and neurotic behaviors like soft addictions and things that consume my most important asset, meaning my time, just become so much easier to overcome. So today I'm going to actually guide you through a visualization, and this is going to be something that you can return to on a regular basis, and I highly recommend that um, you keep this in your toolkit um, if you're met with a lot of resistance, fear, or a lot of the other things that happen when you're on a path towards greatness and stepping out of your comfort zone. In today's society, it's easier than ever to just piss away your life. And that's exactly what most people do. They work as wage slaves doing meaningless work. They engage in mindless consumption, buying things that they don't need. They engage in petty gossip online and with their friends. And then they try and numb the pain of it all with cheap thrills like parties, restaurants, and um, just vacations where they go somewhere for a temporary amount of time. And, you know, they are just swimming in a sea of pettiness, not paying attention at all to what matters. When you truly embody memento mori or just remembering how final this life is, it's virtually impossible to work a meaningless job for any extended period of time. It's also impossible to just buy a bunch of junk you don't need. So when you develop um, and cultivate this deep sense of awareness around the finality of life, um, it becomes much easier just to really go for what you want. So if you're watching today's video, you are probably interested in personal development. You may have gotten glimpses of your higher self, and you probably have some lofty goals for yourself, which is amazing. So a practice like Memento Mori is going to really keep you in check and prevent you from falling back asleep. And I assure you, you will fall back asleep sometimes. So I'm actually going to um, read you some quotes from the Stoics. So memento mori, or contemplating one's death, is a practice that was created by the Stoics. And so the Stoics were, unlike a lot of other philosophers that were in universities or in other academic environments, these were the movers and shakers of their day. They were emperors, businessmen, and merchants really out there living the philosophy rather than just thinking or writing about it. And what really appeals to me the most about um, Stoic philosophy is that they often talk about uh, how people were in Rome and specifically they mentioned that people were squandering their time, they were living aimlessly and really not um, and really taking for granted how precious this one life is that we have. So to really get you into the space of memento mori, I'm going to read some quotes from Stoic philosophers just to kind of hammer in how integral the memento mori practice was to the Stoic lifestyle. It is not death that a man should fear, but he should fear never beginning to live. So this really drives on the point of when you have debilitating fear of failure, a lot of times you're blocking yourself from even stepping into the arena of living your life at all. And oftentimes, that's even worse than death. The man who has learned to die has unlearned to be a slave. So for this quote, um, you know, what comes to mind for me is that once you are fully bought in or you develop a, per, a deep acceptance of the finality of life, you are no longer a slave to a lot of the biggest fears that many people have, which is the opinions of others, it might be um, social status, you start to, these things start to lose their grip on you because you realize how unimportant they are. You realize that in a hundred years, everyone in the room with you is going to be dead and most people will not remember them. And that really invites a lot of freedom into your life. Freedom to just show up fully and just to go for it because why the fuck not? You are scared of death, but tell me, is the life you are leading any different than death? This one truly puts the nail into the coffin for me because 
a lot of people are holding back in their lives. They're not really going for um, the, you know, their dreams and aspirations because um, they want to stay safe. And you know, they think that they're, they get a payoff from staying where they are. But if you really look at it, if you were to fast forward to your deathbed, is there really a payoff? Did uh, playing it small, being insignificant, and withholding your gifts from the world really pay off for you or for anybody else? So this one hits really hard for me in particular. Life will follow the path it started upon and will neither reverse nor check its course. It will make no noise. It will not remind you of its swiftness. Silent, it will glide on. It will not prolong itself at the command of a king or at the applause of the populace. Just as it was started on its first day, so it will run. Nowhere will it turn aside. Nowhere will it delay. So this is really talking about um, how whether you're conscious of death or not, life is going to pass by very quickly. And eventually you will have to reckon with the finality of life, that there's only one and that your physical form will decay and you're going to be giving it back to the universe. And so for me, this almost, this brings up a, almost like a, a dilemma that many people have where they don't want to think about death. Um, but ultimately the wise thing to do is to think about death because regardless, you're going to be facing it. All right, so now that we laid a foundation for Memento Mori, let's have the rubber meet the road. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started with the visualization. So firstly, go ahead and settle into your practice space. Ideally, you can lay down on a yoga mat um, or lay down on your bed. And the idea here is that we want to mimic death pose or shavasana. And if uh, you aren't able to lay down, that is totally okay. Just make sure you have a seat, um, like a couch or a chair, where you could really surrender into it. I want to make sure that you're supported and not using... Uh, not exerting any um, extra effort just to maintain your posture. If you're choosing to lay down, make sure that you're warm and you're just comfortable with the temperature. And you may want to have a blanket either on top of you already or nearby just to ensure that you don't have to reach for it later. So go ahead and get settled into your space. Go ahead, and If you need to, you can go ahead and pause the video. Okay. So we're going to get started now that you're settled. So firstly, I want you to close your eyes and just notice all the points touching the ground, starting from the backs of your feet, running up to the backs of your legs, noticing your pelvis, noticing your back, noticing your shoulders, backs of your shoulders touching the earth. And finally, notice your head. And as we notice our head, we want to start to closely follow our inhales into the base of our lungs, into the diaphragm, and closely follow the exhales. And we're going to do that two more times. Inhale, follow the inhale to the diaphragm, deep belly breathing, and then exhale. And last one, inhale. Follow the inhale to the base of the lungs or to the diaphragm, and then follow it out. So notice you are present. Notice the sensations arising. Really feel that you're inside your body right now. And notice that fundamentally, this sensation that you exist is the most real thing that there is about you. Notice any sounds. Notice that they are changing every second. Notice any thoughts or mental images that you might have. Notice the internal dialogue in your mind and just allow all of it to be exactly as it is. Don't label it or judge it. Just sit back and notice it. And now that you're in this space of noticing all the sensations arising and feeling deeply into your experience, start to wonder, what is all of this? 
these sensations, thoughts, sounds, smells, images, and feelings in the body. What are these sensations really? Do I really know what they are? And just resist the urge to jump in and answer the question. Leave this question wide open. Be impressionable. If an answer arises or a message from your body, just notice that too. And allow yourself to savor these sensations. Just really step into your being and all of this that affirms that you're here and alive. Now imagine yourself before your birth. What was that like? Who do you think you were before you were conscious? Before you had this body or any of these sensations? Try to imagine it the best you can. For you, there is no such thing as time or space. No such thing as consciousness or sensation. And recognize that that was your state of existence, not just for a thousand years or a million years or a billion years, but for all of infinity. You existed as this nothingness for nearly all of eternity until now. Now think of being born. Call to mind when you first became conscious of your existence, perhaps some early childhood memories. And now just quickly run through a highlight reel of your entire life. Just quickly flash images of the house you grow up in, maybe your school years, and just any other highlights that come to mind. Could be relationships, places you traveled, places you lived tragedies you experience. And no matter how long it's been, no matter how old you are, just notice how quickly that time passed by. Really soak into how much you've lived up until this point, how much experience you've had. And then pose the question to yourself. Who do you become when you fall asleep? When you have no awareness, sense of time, no memories? Is it possible that you return to this nothingness? It's almost as if every night you go to sleep, you are dead. And it's almost as if every morning you wake up, you are reborn. Now, estimate how much time you still have left in your life. Pick a number that you think is realistic. Imagine going to sleep like you will later tonight, but you never again wake up. You never experience anything ever again. You don't even have the experience of looking into your closed eyelids. Pure nothingness. Really rest into that nothingness. Soak in the reality that you will never again be able to experience any of the things you've experienced in this short window of your life. You won't see colors. You won't experience nature. You won't be able to feel good in your body. You won't be able to experience the richness of life in any way at all. Notice how final this is, the finality of it all. And notice that what you have right now is the most miraculous, the most mysterious, the most beautiful, and the most remarkable thing, which is simply existence. You have the ability to exist in a very rich way. You have colors, sights, sounds, touch, and all other forms 
of consciousness. Recognize and be conscious that this is your chance. This isn't a warm-up round. This is it. What are you going to do with it? What's worth doing with it? And what would your life look like if you honored this one chance to live fully? We don't know how you got this opportunity, but somehow, here you are. Really, really soak that in around what would your life look like if you really honored this one chance to live fully? And lastly, just soak in the finality of it all because it will end this is a reality you will not escape. And instead of being afraid of it or worrying about what's going to happen to you, accept this as a beautiful aspect of life. You've been given this slither of time. You don't know how or why. And that's not something to be fixed or changed. That is fine and perfect just the way it is. And notice that the only thing you need to do to not be afraid is to live the most rich life you possibly could. If you just do your best to live the richest life you can, it doesn't matter how long it is. You can die in peace and accept your fate. I'm gonna to count to three, and when I get to three, you're gonna come back awake and refreshed. One, inviting movement into your fingers and toes, Two, be more conscious of your surroundings. And three, open your eyes, come back awake and refreshed. Congratulations, you've just done something quite radical and rem remarkable. Now that we've completed your meditation, you're in an expanded state of consciousness, connected to the finality and how finite and precious what you have is. And so what I want you to do is I'm going to provide you with a few reflective questions, okay? And then because you're in this state, you're going to fall asleep quickly as soon as you get back into your life. Um, go ahead and complete these questions. So they are, what would I miss most about life? What do I want to get out of this life? What is really worth doing? And what isn't worth doing? So pause the video and answer the questions while you're in this expanded state and come back when you're done. All right, well, that's it for today's video of Memento Mori. Um, I hope you are in an expanded state, excited to offer your gifts to the world and really aware of how precious this uh, opportunity to live, in fact, is. Um, in particular, I feel that the biggest takeaway from the Memento Mori practice is stop doing petty shit. We're all thinking about petty things and doing petty things on a regular basis. And it's really just um, eating away our life. And I hope that this practice really gets you um, a little bit closer to a space where you're really guarding um, your time and being very discerning about um, who you give your time to and what you give your time to, including your headspace. So, um, if you got value from today's video and would like more videos like it, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more updates on how to optimize your mind, body, and emotions. And like I said in the beginning of the video, go ahead and listen to this for 21 days straight to really wire it in. And then afterwards, do this once a week. I like to do it on Sundays when I'm preparing for my week and reflecting on the previous week. And I find it to be a very powerful exercise then. Another last practice is this. And don't forget it. So this is important. Every day when you wake up, have a reminder of memento mori or of finality of, of this life nearby. Could be in your bedroom. Could be in the place that you go in the morning to have coffee, whatever it is. And I want you to think to yourself, just for a couple of minutes, I want you to complete this sentence without thinking much. You don't need to, uh, you just need to let the stream of consciousness flow. And the sentence stem is, if I was more conscious of my death, I would. And just 
you know, complete it 10 times or so and really sit with that for a couple minutes. If I was really conscious of death, I would. And see what comes up. So curious uh, what arises for you there. All right, so that's all I got today. Um, once again, it's a pleasure to share this information with you and these practices. I hope you're getting a lot of benefit from them. And I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.